Hello everyone, I'm E House from Gun Gamers. I'm Amy. Welcome to another episode of Speed Sim. Today we are going to be talking about the different propellants that you can use with your gas blowback airsoft pistol and rifle and whatever else you feel like. Yeah. So different propellants, uh, you know, have their advantages and disadvantages. And the first thing I'm going to start talking about is green gas. Everybody knows what green gas is. Literally everybody uses it. Uh, green gas is pretty much a staple for all green gas or all gas guns in general here in the United States, you don't really see too much uh, aside from maybe some people using the red or black gas and that's for a topic for a whole different conversation. Um, it's great. I mean, there's numerous of different uh, manufacturers that make green gas, Elite Force, Vulcan, New Pro, WE. I mean, every, a lot of companies make green gas. Uh, depending on which one is your favorite one, it's really up to you. I love New Pro because it has a little bit more uh, efficiency in cold weather. Um, now, I generally don't use a lot of green gas for my pistols, mainly because they are TM and they kind of, the parts aren't really made for green gas. And this is why you want to upgrade your high cut, but like we mentioned in previous videos. So green gas is actually a mixture of two things. Uh, the propellant is actually propane, yeah. uh, but it's unscented propane mixed to a silicone. And usually there is somewhat of a little bit of a scent to green gas. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people call it like a uh, lemon pledge, uh, but so that's what green gas is. It is just propane. Now you can buy an adapter and use just propane in your gas blowback airsoft guns. The uh, Airsoft Innovations adapter is something that I think a lot of people have owned at one point or another. Uh, the disadvantage of propane compared to green gas is green gas has silicone lubricant in it. And as compared to like the camping stove propane, green gas is cleaner. Yeah. Because if and you- it doesn't smell. Yeah, and, and yeah, propane smells bad. If you've ever been to an airsoft field and you've seen someone load up propane, you know they're using propane. <laughs> yeah, there is no mistaking that scent. It's like rotten also, farts that someone put yeah. in a jar. Also, if you buy a used gas pistol and you try to use your new pro or whatever regular green gas, it smells. The mag will still smell of, of propane. Yeah. It's odd. That, that smell sense. never comes no. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the other thing about propane is you can buy like the... Uh, the torch style propane, that doesn't smell quite as bad, but that is even like, and it's a little cleaner maybe than the camping propane, but it's not green gas. Green gas is the cleanest, arguably definitely the cleanest and most uh, lubricated propellant that you can use because right. it, it does have the silicone in it. So this is good for just put it in your gun and the gas is probably not going to be the reason your gun fails. Right. Um, um, one thing that I want to throw in here though, just because it has silicone in it doesn't mean that you don't ever have to lube your pistol. You still have to do that yes. regardless. Uh, then there's, as you mentioned, there's like black gas and red gas. Yeah. Those are just different propellants at higher pressure. Yep. I, uh, someone smarter than me probably knows exactly what the chemical components of those are, but generally speaking, those are also comparable to like map gas. Uh, which Garrett, I know, yeah. and Joe both use when they want to run gas blowbacks in a little bit of colder water. weather. Yeah. Uh, the disadvantage of those is they are higher pressure and they might blow up your nozzle or they might wear out your parts really quickly or they might push your gun into shooting too hot to be usable. Mm -hmm. So definitely weigh your risk versus reward with those. I wouldn't recommend running red gas in like 90% of airsoft pistols. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't recommend using map gas unless you're using a gas blowback rifle in cold weather, yeah. because that's gonna just abuse your parts and your seals. Uh, we have duster <clears throat> gas. Now I don't have any fancy whatever Asian product. I have this that I bought from Amazon. They come in a six pack and I just use the Airsoft Innovations adapter. Um, this is perfect for all TM guns. Uh, if you have a, t a plastic slide gun, I mean, you can use it in pretty much any green gas gun, uh, but typically these are meant for TM because they have plastic slides and this shoots at a lower pressure, like somewhere between like 70 or 80 PSI, I'm not 100% sure. If you know, you can put a comment down below and let me know. Um, so this is perfect for your TM based pistols because that's what they're typically meant to run on. And I am going to be trying this this year to see how I like it compared to HPA. Uh, duster gas is one of the first gases we're going to talk about, though, that is not in any fashion lubricated. No. <laughs> uh, so you still have to lubricate and maintain with green gases, yeah, mentioned, mentioned. Yeah. but you have to be especially diligent uh, with 
propane and with duster gas and HPA and CO2 yep. because all these gases are dry gases that don't have lubricant put into them. And as a result, you're going to wear out and dry out your seals faster if you are not on top of your maintenance. Uh, but duster gas does have the nice benefit of being, it is a dry gas, but it's low pressure. So yes, as you mentioned, yep. perfect for TMs and all yep. the like. Cool. Moving along, uh, we have HPA. Now, a lot of people have been transitioning over to HPA via uh, rifles or gas rifles or even pistols. Most of the time you see them on pistols now, but again, HPA rifles. HPA really tapped gas shotguns. Oh, right. Tons of those too as yep. well. Great thing about this, you have a lot of air and you can carry it anywhere with you. Downsides, um, again, like we mentioned with this duster gas, it is dry gas, so you still have to maintain it. Um, but it, uh, it does take a little bit of uh, finessing to reload. This is kind of a long reload. Um, unlike, you know, having the gas in your magazine, this you have to undo the quick detach, put it in your dump pouch, grab a new mag, plug it in, and then put it in your gun, and then rack it or, or drop the, uh, the slide release, and then you're ready to go. And it does take some, people can get really good at it, but just know that it's a long reload. Um, another uh, disadvantage about this sort of disadvantage. Um, it's kind of a huge buy-in cost because um, the tank, depending on which ones you get, you can get anywhere from about $60-ish to get in for a, a normal tank. And then you got to buy the regular, which is usually about $100 plus dollars, and then you get to get a line, which is another 40 So there's a, an investment here for HPA. Plus, you have to get it filled every time you run out. Unlike well, green gas, you can just buy more cans, and literally every airsoft store has it. Um, so that's another kind of a inherent limitation is it's, it's, it's kind of a, a large buying cost on top of buying the taps. But the nice part is it's variable pressure yep. because you have a regulator that's adjustable. Now this adds to the buying cost because usually they'll still want you to have a tournament lock, mm -hmm. um, but you can adjust the PSI and that means that you can run HPA at duster gas level yep. PSI. So you can use this on a plastic slide. I know a ton of people, you included, mm -hmm. who will use 3D printed slides and then run it on HPA because it's really snappy, it's really consistent, you don't get the cool down effect exactly. as much with other gases, mm -hmm. and you just have all the air you can need. Uh, now, the reload thing is definitely worth mentioning. You know, if you're doing a speed reload with a pistol, it's a lot easier when the mag isn't tethered to you. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you're using this in like a gas shotgun, like I mentioned, then whatever, the line is going into the butt stock and you're reloading the shell. So that's something to consider. I know we were focusing this mostly on blowbacks, but yep. if you have a platform that is non-blowback that's somehow tapped, then a lot of times you can get around the reload issue, which is kind of nifty. Right. And finally, we have this little guy, <laughs> CO2, in a 12 gram capsule, which is not nearly as impressive <laughs> a display as these other ones on the table. Uh, but this is CO2. and. Everyone knows this, and yeah. this is probably the second most common next to green gas. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of popular guns that use CO2. Uh, the Elite Force and KWC 1911s, uh, the upcoming Glocks are going to have a CO2 version. There's CO2 mags for a ton of airsoft guns that are on the market. Uh, so what are the pros and cons of CO2? I'll let you start since I took the dramatic reveal. That's fine. Um, so... First of all, pros, uh, you can get a lot of shots out of your mag. So if you have a high kappa, because they make them for high kappa, uh, they have CO2 mags for them. They have, like Eric said, Glock ones. <laughs> can't focus, right? <laughs> this is the dramatic reveal, and you're like... <laughs> now, downsides, um, it's a lot higher pressure. So if you do if, think about putting it in your high cap, but just know that there's a lot of pressure behind this bad boy. And for the armor works in some WE and KJW, this will work okay. Uh, I'm not 100% would recommend this, but it would still wear out your parts super fast. But I have tried it in the armor works in KJWs and it does fine. It can last for quite some time, especially if you keep up with the maintenance and whatnot. Cause this is again, with one of those dry gases, CO2 needs to be looped every single time. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing with CO2 is it can eat parts. Yeah. Uh, the other disadvantage of CO2 is that, uh, now Garrett was talking about this because he's a super nerd. <laughs> and in terms of the chemical properties of CO2, it actually does cool down faster on full auto. Yes. Uh, but if you're not using it on full auto, then that's irrelevant. Most guns don't shoot full auto on CO2 besides all those Besides rifles. like rifles yeah. or say if you had a G18C. Uh, or the uh, Elite Force 792, I think, is capable of full auto. What is the Elite Force um, Uzi? Uh, 
Yeah, that's. I think that's CO2. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's there's that's the upcoming uh, MP40. That's CO2. Yeah. So bear in mind that you are going to have some cool down on prolonged full auto bursts with CO2 that's even worse than green gas, yeah. uh, if you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, uh, but the thing with CO2 is it's super available. You oh, can yeah. get this at Walmart. You can get this at Dick's. Dick's you can get this at Target. Yeah. You, can get, you can get this stuff anywhere. You can yeah. find CO2 anywhere. It's, it's really easy to get, uh, and it's cheap. But then the disadvantage, you know, as Amy mentioned, is it's higher pressure, Ooh. it's really dry, and it'll wear out parts fast. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of funny, because this is something I feel like the airsoft market has just been cheaping out on forever. Because then you have, like, some pellet guns that are CO2 blowback that seem to last way longer than some airsoft guns on CO2. So, what are you doing differently, airsoft? What are you doing wrong? And then the other disadvantage is that because CO2 is higher pressure, I've noticed that some CO2 mags from some brands, especially from my experience, uh, the KJW mags, some of them just don't last long. Oh, yeah. Just because the additional pressure on the seals, they just can't seem to get it right. Um, so bear that in mind as you're shopping around. Uh, try to find CO2 mags that are reliable. Uh, but generally speaking, the disadvantages, in my opinion, you know, for some guns, outweigh the or don't outweigh the advantages, because I quite like CO2. I yeah. wish that it was more standard. But, you know, that's just me. Right. CO2's great. Yeah. Just super high in pressure. <laughs> yeah, and definitely a maintenance hog. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. This has been just a quick kind of look at different propellants and whatever you choose to go down which route. Um, once again, my name is Amy. And I'm E House. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you want to see more content from us, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support the channel, be sure to click the link below to buy a patch. Praise Judy. There we go. Yeah, now we're filming. Now, now we're going. You know, I actually had that happen the other day yeah. where the camera was still on photo mode and I hit the button, thought I was recording, and I went for like 15 minutes oh, okay. thinking that I was recording video oh, and then the camera is like sleep mode I'm like what but I'm recording oh you've got to be shitting me what video was this it was the uh the beginner gun video the so what? the beginner gun video oh, so I thanks. recorded like 15 minutes like of just me recording and doing various takes and doing all that and then the camera shuts off and I'm like I thought I was recording no I wasn't so I felt like a super idiot, but right. it was, uh, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's hilarious.